Good day, everyone. I'm so glad you're here at Hope Kids Online. My name is Pastor Kevin, and we've got lots planned for you today. Do me a favor, find three people sitting around you and thank them for being here too. Thank you. Today, we're taking one last look at gratitude. Being thankful and showing gratitude doesn't stop with the month of November. Oh no, it doesn't. We can make a habit out of it, something you do without even thinking. But first, here's a reminder of what gratitude is, letting others know you see how they've helped you. Knowing God doesn't happen in a moment. It's not like you wake up one morning and bam, you know God. You have all of them figured out, everything there is to know, no more questions or doubts. We all know this. Growing in faith takes time and effort. In Hope Kids, we highlight four faith skills to help kids grow in their relationship with God. We hear God's word, we pray to him, we talk to others about our faith, and we worship God through our lives. We like to sing to God as well, but worshiping God is more than just singing songs. Worshiping is about living life in a way that honors God. Check out what living a life that honors God through our gratitude might look like in your life today. Where does gratitude start? With your words? Oh, uh, hold on one second. Hello? Oh, thanks. In your head? What about your heart? Being thankful includes all of those things, your heart, your head, and your words. But I think gratitude truly begins with your eyes. It starts with paying attention, stopping to see the people around you and all the other beautiful things in your life, like the way your dad buttered and cut your toes just the way you like it. That crossing guard standing in the pouring rain to make it safe for you to get to school. The way your kid brother can turn even cleaning your room into a party. Your fingerprints that God designed for you and no one else in the whole world. That amazing, breathtaking sunset on the way home from dance class. When you truly see these things, it changes your heart. The words bubble up in your mind and you can't help but say thank you. The more you remember to thank God and the people around you, the more others can see God at work in you. And that's why gratitude is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. That was so good. I'm so thankful for God's love. He loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to be our savior. Let's give thanks for his love today. And now let's worship him through our singing and dancing. Here we go.
This holiday season, Hope Lutheran Church is receiving our ninth annual angel tree. We at Hope believe that every child deserves to experience the joy of Christmas. And we as a church are doing our part in making that happen. The angel tree with 250 plus angels will appear at the church on Tuesday, November 24th. There are three ways to get involved and take this opportunity to give a Christmas gift to a local child in need. One, stop by the church during the office hours starting November 24th, Tuesday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and pick up an angel or two or three. Number two, you can call the church office at 760-346-1273 and request to have an angel sent to your home. Or three, if you're uncomfortable with either of those options, you can also send a donation made out to Welka to the church office at 45900 Portola Avenue, Palm Desert, California, 92260. And we'll choose an angel and do the shopping for you. Please help us make a difference this Christmas in the life of a child right here in the valley. I'm super grateful that I get to share what's in the Bible with you and I hope that you enjoy it as much as I do. Today we're looking at something the Apostle Paul wrote in a letter to the church in Corinth, which we call 1 Corinthians. In this part of the letter, Paul was talking to believers in Corinth about a special kind of celebration. We have lots of celebrations that remind us of something important that happened before, like your birthday, for example. On your birthday, you celebrate the day you were born. At Christmas, we celebrate how Jesus was born. Just this Thanksgiving, we celebrated everything we're thankful for. There's another celebration that happens often in churches around the world, and that's what Paul's writing about in his letter today. It's called communion. Today, we're taking a look at the background of this awesome celebration. What does it all mean? Where does it come from? Why do we celebrate it? Well, let's check it out together. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. The night before Jesus gave up his life, he had a special dinner with his closest friends, the Passover meal. Take this and eat it. The Israelites had been celebrating Passover for a long, long time. It all began in Egypt when God's people were forced into slavery. At last, God sent Moses to face down Pharaoh and demand freedom for the Israelites. Let my people go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to let the Israelites go, but then changed his mind. And each time, God sent a plague, a terrible warning, so Pharaoh would let the Israelites go. There were frogs, flies, hail, darkness, and more. And finally, God sent the 10th and most terrible plague of all. The Lord says, every oldest son in Egypt will die. It was a terrible day, but God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Go at once. Each family must kill a Passover lamb. Put some of the blood on top and on both sides of the door frame. The Lord won't let the destroying angel enter your homes. The Israelites did just as God had told them. That night, Pharaoh finally ordered the Israelites to leave. Get out of here. Go! The Israelites packed so quickly that they didn't even have time for their bread to rise, so they baked flatbread without yeast. Mmm, crunchy. Then God led them out of Egypt to freedom. Always remember this day. You and your children after you must celebrate this day 
as a feast to honor the Lord. As God instructed, the Israelites made a habit of celebrating Passover with a meal of lamb and flatbread with no yeast, just like the bread they had taken with them out of Egypt. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Jesus grew up celebrating the Passover every single year. But when he shared the meal with his friends the night before he died, Jesus did something different. He changed the Passover meal. The Apostle Paul wrote about it years later in his letter to the Corinthians. On the night the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body. It is given for you every time you eat it. Do it in memory of me. The bread was a reminder of how the very next day, Jesus would give himself up and allow himself to be killed for us. Paul continues. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. The drink was a reminder of how Jesus would allow his own blood to be spilled out so that we can live. Because of Jesus, we don't have to try to prove to God that we're good enough. All we have to do is believe that Jesus came to rescue us and choose to follow him. Jesus took an old habit of gratitude, the Passover, and made a brand new habit of gratitude, the Lord's Supper or Communion. The Passover meal was a celebration of how God had rescued his people from slavery. Now, the Lord's Supper is a celebration of how God has made it possible for everyone to be rescued from sin and death through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And for the last 2,000 years, people have been celebrating what Jesus did for us by eating bread and drinking wine or juice together. Some churches do it every Sunday or every month. Others might do it a few times a year. They use different kinds of bread or wafers or wine or juice. But in every case, the habit is the same. It's a beautiful chance for us to remember together the amazing way that God has rescued us and to thank Him for all He's given us. What Jesus did for us is simply amazing. We should take time to remember Him and celebrate Him together. Just like we take time out of our days to celebrate birthdays, Christmas, and Thanksgiving, we can take time to remember all that God's done in our lives. Communion is a great way that we can do that together. For those who believe in Jesus, communion is a way for us to remember that Jesus died for us on the cross. The bread reminds us of his body, and the cup reminds us of the blood that shed for our sins. It's important for us to celebrate these things. When we take time to thank God, it reminds us that he is always with us. It reminds us that we can trust him no matter what. It can help us live a grateful way every day, grateful to God and grateful to the people around us. That's what we need to remember today, to remember to get in the habit of being grateful. Thank you for joining us this week. We hope kids love sharing God's awesome message with you. And if you've enjoyed this month, please give us a shout out of gratitude on your social media page and tag Hope Kids on either Facebook or Instagram. Refer them to our Hope Palm Desert YouTube page and remind them to subscribe to it so they don't miss out on anything. As well, one of the things we love at Hope Kids is hearing from you. Reach out to me, Kevin, and let us know that you are thankful for something this week. And you can do that by simply emailing me at kevin at hopepd.org or text or call me at 760-567-6973. And I hope that this month we began to see the gratitude is a choice that God can help us make. It's an attitude adjustment worth making, especially when we remember that Jesus died on the cross for us. Let's pray. 
Dear God, thank you so much for everything you've done in our life. God, thank you for the sacrifice you made. Help me to remember it often as I go and do things like communion, Lord. That I can worship you through song, but I can also worship you through honoring you through my actions and my life. Lord, I love you and I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Have a great week.